Well, looks like dad took a wrong turn again, and now we're stuck in some kind of supernatural theme park. In this episode, we're heading to the bathhouse and diving headfirst into another magical animated world filled with beautiful scenery, compelling characters, and wonderfully charming monsters. I'm talking, of course, about the 2001 animated masterpiece from Hio Miyazaki, Spirited Away. The film was originally released in Japan in 2001, grossing over $20 million in the box office before it was even released in the U.S. in 2002. It's the first time any film has ever crossed uh, the 20 million mark internationally before being released in the U.S. And at the time of this recording, it's also the first and only hand-drawn non-English language animated film to ever win the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature. I guess sometimes the Academy does get it right. Welcome to Three Films in a Podcast, the show where Destiny brought together three friends to enhance each other's cinematic journey by watching three new movies in a series of themed rounds. There is no claim of ownership on any film footage used in this episode, as all film footage is owned in its entirety by the copyright holders. And just like every car in Too Fast, Too Furious, this podcast contains spoilers. Enjoy! Hello and welcome back to Three Films in a Podcast. My name is Tyler Beck and I'm coming to you from a van down by the Kahuka River <laughs> and I'm joined as always by Ben Lawhorn in Salt Lake City, Utah. Hey dad, is that Bill Shakespeare over there? Hello, I just, I, I, did, I didn't know you were doing the van down by the river. It's the first thing I could think of. I love that skit. It's pretty good. Hi. It's pretty good on short notice. I yeah. even pronounced the name of the river wrong, but that's not you know, strange for me. <laughs> Um, and I'm also uh, with uh, Matt Weiler, and he's from easily in the top 10 of most Pleasant Groves in the United States, down in Utah, Pleasant Grove, Utah, Matt Weiler. Alohomora. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's always got something for I me. I like it. And I love it. Uh, if you're new to the show, welcome to the movie club. And uh, for those of you returning, returning, yeah, if you're returning to the show, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> We're also a great what was, start. <laughs> yeah, this is excited. great. Uh, what, what once was a long group chat has evolved into this podcast that you're listening to or watching on YouTube, and we are certainly happy to have you here. Uh, if you'd like to follow us and tell your friends to follow us, all that stuff, we're everywhere at Three Films Pod, and you can find your merch, patrons, and all the other needs at threefilmspod.com. But before we go any further, and before we dive into this movie, uh, please allow me to introduce to you all a very special guest that floated down onto our balcony, KJ from Talking Pictures Trivia. Hello, KJ. Hey, guys. KJ here. Super excited to be hey, here. KJ. To talk about- hey, Matt. Ben. I'm excited Tyler. to have you here. Yeah. Should be good to talk about some Studio Ghibli, talk about some Miyazaki. Yeah. Absolutely. It'll be fun. So now oh, we've, yeah. got, we've got uh, two thirds of the Talking Pictures Trivia Infinity Stones in our gauntlet. That's we just right. need one more. <laughs> then we'll have the complete set. Yeah. <laughs> we'll snap our fingers and wipe out half of our podcast competition. <laughs> well, and Ben or I will snap dominance. our fingers. Yeah. True. I can't. Yeah. You cannot snap. We'll take yeah. care of it. <laughs> Let's take that out and let it be a patron exclusive. I don't want the, the world yeah. at large to know I can't snap my fingers. <laughs> uh, but yeah, KJ, thanks again, man, for joining us. Um, we've been on your show a few times and. Uh, Tom from your show has been on ours. So um, in light of all that, why don't you let the world know about where you're from, your podcast, how they can find you, all that good stuff. Yeah. Talking Pictures Trivia, uh, another podcast, very similar to um, Three Films Pod. Uh, We take a movie. We ask a few trivia questions about the movie, which leads to some discussion. Um, We've had uh, Three Films and a Pod guys on for World of a Pooh, Close Encounters, Sheen Godzilla, hopefully a few more coming up. So. Yeah, after you get through the three, three films in a pod episodeology, um, check out uh, <laughs> I love it. Talking Pictures Trivia. Yeah. yeah. No, please do. It's a really fun format. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I, really like I mean, we talked about show. that when, when Tom came on, but I love your guys' format so much. I like, am, like we have a slack between us. And when we were done talking about World of Apu, I messaged these guys right away. I was like, man, it's super cool. I, I love the idea that you guys came up with. So definitely want more people to listen to it. And I'm excited to come back on. Thanks, guys. Well, so this episode marks the end of our Miyazaki round. And this week we're tackling Spirit Away, Spirited Away, as I mentioned in the opener. Um, and until this round of the podcast, I hadn't seen any of uh, Miyazaki's films outside of Princess Mononoke. And uh, I'm personally just really glad that we decided to do this round. Um, we had been talking about it in the Slack for a while. Like, I think since like the conception 
of the mm-hmm. pod. Is that still semantically accurate to say conception or inception? No, conception. I think it's good. Okay. Uh, well, regardless, I'm happy we did it. Um, I just, uh, I've had a blast, uh, you know, exploring all this stuff and seeing all these uh, really cool characters and whatnot. So, um, KJ, I'm, I'm curious about your personal experience. It seems like you, you've seen, I think most of his filmography, if not all. Uh, so yeah, I just would, I'm curious about your experience with this movie and Miyazaki in general and, uh, your overall thoughts about spirited away. Yeah. I, the first, uh, Ghibli movie I saw, and I, I guess it was a Miyazaki film, um, was Mononoke. And I don't, I don't mm-hmm. think I was Me homesick too. or maybe I was up late one night and, um, on Cartoon Network, there was a movie on that was a hmm. cartoon. I had no idea what it was, but I loved it. And then later on, um, my, I guess my future wife, right? She wasn't my wife yet, but, um, and I were taking a, a Japanese class and during the class, they put that movie on to say, Hey, learn Japanese by watching mm. movies. And I was like, Oh, this was that movie. Um, yeah. which gave me the name of the studio. Um, and then my, again, future wife and I, we lived in Japan for a year and we were there for the release of Ponyo, which is oh, another cool. Oh, cool. Uh, Miyazaki movie. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun to be there for, you know, the release That's of awesome. a, uh, the Ghibli film. Um, people were dressing up as Ponyo for Halloween. Like it was, it was really great. And at that point, the floodgates open and we just watched, you know, every, every Ghibli movie that's, nice. that's out there. And during that, uh, Spirited Away was one of the ones we, we watched in the, in the shuffle. Nice. So cool. what, awesome. was, what was your overall thoughts when you, when you saw it the first time? Um, like, did you like it or in the, in relation to all the other stuff you'd seen, where did it land for you? The I like the uh, the Miyazaki and the Ghibli films that are more realistic and less fantastical, mm. more okay. of a from up on Poppy Hill or The Wind Rises, as opposed okay. to um, yeah, Spirited Away or Howl's Moving Castle or um, yeah. even well, yeah. So it's interesting. So, yeah, uh, to, it's good. To, but... Yeah, to hear you say that, and then to say that uh, your introduction to Miyazaki was. Princess Mononoke, because that kind of rides a pretty thin line between the fantastic and the sure, sure, and the realistic. But um, yeah, I mean that makes sense to me. I I personally really love the 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 fantastic elements of this. So or, yeah. or, or of Miyazaki's work. So yeah, um, Matthew Weiler, what about you? What was your yes, personal sir. experience? Oh man, like so I had seen Princess Mononoke the first as well, and when I saw that this was coming out and you know, they were marketing it as the same studio that did Princess Mononoke. I was like so excited and I watched it and I just like seeing this movie made me feel like I was graduating from one form of animation to like a higher <laughs> level of animation. Yeah. <laughs> and I kind of felt like sort of an animation snob afterward, like for years, like I felt like so almost like a, to a hipster level, like, oh, you guys haven't seen any Miyazaki. <laughs> but uh, I and I've loved it for years. Like I yeah, I just loved it. And it's been endearing to me ever since. Um, and similar to KJ, like it, it kind of opened the floodgates. I, I watched all or as many as I could the Studio Ghibli. There's still a few that I need to check off. But uh, yeah, I, I loved it. Some of those some of those scenes are just like so great. And I know we're going to talk about that later, but I, I'm watching him again to, uh, just as we watch this again. Um, and it's just some of these shots are just crazy. Awesome. Yeah. They're, and so wait, am so I, cool. am I right in you, you saw this when it came out originally, like you watched yeah. it happen in the moment. Oh, okay. That's rad. Did you go see it in theaters? Yeah, I did. Did you Jordan literally Commons. just say all this? No, I didn't. I, I mean, I, <laughs> okay. <good. laughs> I, I Don't just, pull my I bit where I repeat what someone else says is my idea. <laughs> I just, I had a moment like KJ, you mentioned like you, you're worried about your memory. I had a moment. I'm like, I think Matt just said all this stuff a second ago and i don't remember it it was no I, I mentioned the marketing but uh but i mean to your point there was only a few theaters showing it so the jordan yeah. commons was one of those mm. oh nice. yeah, it was a select you know select theaters had it so that's where i saw it and yeah it was awesome shout out larry miller yeah r.i.p um <laughs> Yeah, KJ this was... has no idea what that means. No <laughs> Poor Mr. Right. Miller. I mean. <laughs> he was like the car dealership mogul. He owned the Utah Jazz. Uh, oh. He had a, a chain of megaplexes here. Yeah. He's a big guy in Utah history. So, yeah. 
Nice. Yes. Yes. Very much so. You'll um, get that question right at your next bar trivia night. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which theater in Utah didn't show Brokeback Mountain, but did show Saw? Yeah. <laughs> and why? <laughs> <laughs> Answer is Jordan Commons. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this um, this was my first viewing. And I mean, I need to revisit Totoro, but this like jumped up to being my favorite real quickly yeah. like i loved this movie so much um i thought it was great like i've talked about it in the other episode totoro is the only thing i had seen and that was you know within the last decade so i'm very late to all this that's why i picked miyazaki because i just felt like it was a big hole you know and i was mm-hmm. like i need to i need to watch some of this stuff you know ghibli gets talked about all the time so i'm glad we watched all these this has been a really fun round for me but uh, for me, we're we're going out on my personal high. Like I thought this was wonderful. This like just hit all the right notes that I needed. Like it was fantastical, but it wasn't like you know. There's parts of Hal's Moving Castle where I was just like, what, what the fuck's going on right now? Yeah. Like I just like it was like it was too yeah. much for me. I really enjoyed Mononoke, but like I also didn't know what I was getting into, and all of a sudden people's like arms are getting cut off. I was like, I didn't realize they did this. Like this is crazy. So <laughs> this was just like this was the goldilocks this was the middle like perfect ben miyazaki movie i loved this so much um so yeah i I had a i had a great time with it i'm excited to to watch it again um and yeah i think this has been a super fun round yeah i am it's funny you say that because princess mononoke i think uh would actually be a pretty good answer for my what movie would you like to see first again uh because i'll never forget the first time i watched princess mononoke and i think that experience keeps it pretty high on my Mm -hmm. on my uh whatever my miyazaki meter (laughs) Uh, but spirit of the way is it's uh you know it's it's closing the gap pretty close i i was blown away by this movie and i think a lot of it honestly had to do with um the the voice work and the dubbing i don't know if you guys watched Mm -hmm. the dubs or the subs i watched the dubs again this time Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, and i think a lot of it had to do with i felt like they did a really really good job with the dubbing in this one and the voice performances were uh, a lot better in my opinion than the ones I'd seen previously. Yeah. Took me a sec to place uh Michael Chiklis because for some reason I was like, is this Josh Brolin? That's who I thought it was at the beginning because it kind of <laughs> sounded like it to me. And then yeah. mm-hmm. pulled up the IMDB is like, oh yeah, Chiklis, of course. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so this is our last Miyazaki movie uh for this round. Not forever, probably, but <laughs> for the time being, and at least in the terms of this podcast. Um, and so we've been talking about Miyazaki-isms, and uh, this being a Miyazaki film is clearly full of them. So, um, you know, besides the obvious, or maybe because of the obvious, what gives this away as a Miyazaki film for you? Um, and, uh, you know, if you haven't seen, for those who haven't seen the many Miyazaki films, what what might you point them towards? KJ, I'll start with you. Well, first of all, the food, right? The food in yeah. all the Miyazaki mm-hmm. films oh, always looks amazing. and so good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and this one was a little strange cause it was right. It was the, the temptation. The food was mm-hmm. not necessarily a good thing, but, um, yeah. the strong female character, right. I think Miyazaki does female characters. Great. I don't know if you've guys seen yeah. Porco Rosso, but that's got mm. a great female character. I see that one. Um, he holds shots a lot, like way yeah. longer, especially in an animated film that's yeah. maybe geared towards kids. Um, but my favorite part about the Miyazaki films is there's not really an absolute good or evil. All yeah. characters seem to have a little bit of good, a little bit of evil, or maybe that doesn't matter. Like they just have their motivations and they're all just interacting, mm-hmm. right? Even um, yeah. Yubaba at one point is uh, um, complimenting and uh, you know telling everybody else to be like Chihiro. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, I I really like that. It's it's not a Star Wars. It's it's not dark versus light. It's yeah, it's a yeah. story. It's a pure I story. See. I think that was really like, that's something I had to like take in and like understand because that was also part of my disconnect with Howl's was like the witch of the waste, you know, it's like, well, this is the bad person who cast the spell and all that. But now like (laughs) everyone's cool with her. I don't get it. But I think when you put it in the context of like there, no one is really like a hundred percent evil or a hundred percent good. Like there's all, everyone's just kind of in the gray area and it kind of helps you understand it a little bit better. And, you know, for being kids movies, I think it also is kind of a good lesson. Like, Hey, you know, people can change or you can learn from whatever you did. So I think that's a great aspect. Uh, the long shots, that was something I definitely noticed in this movie. Mm-hmm. 
there's one towards the end, even like the bird's eye view as she's crossing the bridge. And we just like watch her cross like the entire bridge. Like, man, like the decisions yeah. he made to do this and some of the other stuff too. Like, um, I mean, I'll talk about this scene later, but when that like stink monster thing comes in and she's trying to like tie the rope around the handle and like the first two times, like she doesn't tie it correctly. And then the third time she gets it, I was like, that's a very conscious decision to do that because it would have been a lot yeah. quicker and a lot easier just to be like, Oh, I got it perfectly the first time. It's like, but he's like letting us know, like all these characters are, you know, not, not perfect. They're, they're human, so to speak. And it's just like, I don't know. I, I loved seeing that stuff in this movie where it's like, man, all these very specific decisions to show us all this stuff. Cause it's not like they just happen to catch it in the camera. Like everything is done for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, my very basic answer for the Miyazaki isms is just that like you could take out all of the active animation and just show me the sceneries. And I think mm-hmm. anybody that's watched any of these movies is like, that's a Miyazaki movie. <laughs> like yeah. every yeah, like, sure. whatever it is, like you could just lay all these out next to each other. It's like, yeah, that's a Miyazaki and it's beautiful. That's like the, the thing that kind of carries through for me through all of these, just like the, the, what he does with the landscapes. And even if it's like a, the city or anything like that, like, it all still like it's so I don't know powerful and strong and I I love all the scenery that we get in his movies. Yeah, for sure. Um, I had a point and it went immediately away. You reminded <laughs> me of something and I forgot it, so I'll throw to Matt real quick so I can avoid further embarrassment. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Miyazaki's got like if if I were to point some things out to people to look out for in his other movies, um, and if you watched any of our other Miyazaki episodes, you heard me say these things, but. Uh, you're going to see a lot of goopy creatures, a lot of (laughs) goopy creatures of all sizes, and Mm -hmm. they're all pretty endearing. They all have a personality. Um, You're going to see a lot of earthy scenery uh, with a lot of overgrowth. And more often than not, you're going to see like man-made structures with some natural overgrowth. Um, You're going to see a lot of deserted man-made structures. Those seem to be popular backdrops for for Miyazaki, and they always Mm -hmm. look awesome. I had mentioned in Howl's Moving Castle, usually I, I didn't notice any in this one. I could be wrong, but there's usually like big, intricate aircrafts in his movies. Mm. Um, yeah. in some capacity. I guess it was replaced with dragons and ra- like bird people this time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, and yeah. You, I mean, you have the train. So I guess some vehicles in, in that <laughs> way. But yeah. Um, and then I, I always love seeing like the animals with a human face. They seem to yeah. pop up here and there in, in his yeah. movies. So, so cool. I would I would say look at look out for those things. For sure. Yeah, all those are solid. I think KJ's point about um the the no the no absolute good or no absolute evil, it's just all motivations. That's the one that always sticks out to me. I mean, even here, like, you know, the baby threatens to break <laughs> San's arm. <laughs> And then he gets turned into a mouse and she's like, yeah, you right on my shoulder. You're fine. Like, <laughs> yeah. like just the, the way with which the, especially the heroes in this film seem to just like accept people for, you know, what's happening in the moment and, and just taking into consideration maybe what may have motivated them to do the things that they did. Um, I think it's yeah. really cool. And I think um, it's actually, I wish, I wish it was uh, these stories were as prevalent to like children as I would say like the equivalent of Pixar or Disney would be. And I know, I know they work like studio Ghibli Ghibli works with Disney to get these things, you know, produced and released in the United States. But I just wish they were held as in the American culture <laughs> with such high, as, as, as much regard as they do, like something like, uh, you know, the toy story or whatever. Not that those movies aren't great, but I do think the message of, no absolute good and no absolute evil is is really important and really cool. Um, yeah, that can be like equally great stuff. Like the fact that this got the animated feature was surprising to read that. Like, oh, it's like not something I would have expected the Academy to do, but it makes sense. Like this is, mm-hmm. yeah, people are afraid to expand their horizons, so to speak. So, yeah. You guys um, know what it was up against? That, no, that I year? don't actually. I forgot to look. Shark the, Tale. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Shark Tale with uh, Will Smith. <laughs> um, actually, I think it was Ice Age, Lilo and Stitch, uh, oh, okay. Spirit Stallion of the Camarin, Samarin. Oh, my sister and, uh, loves that movie. Yeah. Um, and then Treasure Planet. Okay. Okay. Cool. 
Also, Spirit, I mean, Treasure Leaf. Planet had some pretty good animation, pretty mm-hmm. like uh, cutting edge animation. So that's pretty significant that it won. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I would assume like Lilo would have gotten us like just having the Disney push. But I guess that was Treasure Planet too, right? Was that Disney? Yeah. Yeah. They both yeah. were. Yeah. Oh, I, I forgot to mention uh, for the sake of having like a different answer for that question, he seems to have a real affinity for bridges. Um, I noticed yes. it, it's funny right before we started this round, I saw the letterboxed Twitter box or the letterboxed Twitter account tweeted out uh, a series of photos just about Miyazaki's bridges. And so I saw that before I started watching these movies. And I, I noticed like every movie features bridges in some prominent fashion. Hmm. And uh, nice. they always look really cool. They're very pretty. Um, so if you guys had to try to convince someone to watch this movie, I just ranted about how I wish more people, especially young children, saw movies like this. Uh, and if you were trying to get someone to watch it by showing them one scene from the movie or just a moment from the movie, what would you choose? KJ, I'm going to start with you. So I think I would um, I do the scene where Haku turns Chihiro invisible and they need to cross okay. the bridge. Mm. Um, I think it's a great little summation of the movie, right? Chihiro's on this journey. She's surrounded by the unknown. She's in this fantastical mm-hmm. place where she doesn't know the rules, doesn't know the vocabulary. She knows you know nothing. Um, and has to trust somebody that she doesn't know. She's got to get across this bridge, so she just has to be still, right? That's the mm-hmm. skill she needs to use to get across. Um, and she fails, which is really kind of great. Like it's a, a great yeah. moment for our our lead character to fail and then have to figure out what to do next. So I think that that early scene where they're mm-hmm. crossing the bridge to get to the um, bathhouse. Yeah, and it that. shows. Awesome. Um, it shows. Uh, Gosh, what's the 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 male dude's name? The dragon dude, Haku. Haku. Yeah, there it is. I had to have one moment where I forgot someone's name. It <laughs> happens every episode, but it shows like sort of his resourcefulness and his power. He's able to. Uh, he puts the frog in like a bubble or something, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And, and then that frog run away. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It just kind of shows it, it, and it's it just kind of yeah. It sets up. It sets things up really nicely. That's a that's a solid pick. I thought you were. When I saw this on the outline, I thought you were talking about a different bridge scene, but we could talk about that later. Um, ben, what would you choose here? Uh, mine was that scene that I kind of talked about earlier with the the stink monster coming in. That's what they refer to it as, right? It was like yeah. the stink creature, whatever. Yeah. So just all the build up to that when it's like still hasn't even crossed the bridge yet and everyone can smell that it's coming, you know, and everyone's like <laughs> starting to freak out like, oh no, just like, it'd be a very long scene, but I just, I, I don't know. I, I loved it. I just loved getting the reactions from the people uh, when Lynn's like holding the two bowls of rice and they just like turn black and like shrivel in, you know, just all this kind of stuff that we see happening just to like really emphasize to us just how bad this is. Um, And then just going through that whole moment where like, you know, she pulls the, the bike out or all the, you know, the trash and stuff like that. I, I enjoyed all of that so much. And it's like, it's just like such a one space, scene you know like it's just this one kind of location but we get such like an idea of the place and like kind of feel like we're there i want yeah. to take a bath in that big huge bath uh, that thing looks amazing <laughs> oh, for sure. you know like <laughs> so cool yeah. like oh that's that's like the dream like hot tub so yeah that's the scene that i would show i i, I really enjoyed that i like that scene too because it's like <clears throat> the first time that uh san really gets a win you know what i mean like she mm-hmm. really that's when she saves the day. It's sort of, I think it's right smack dab in the middle of the movie. So it's like right when the movie turns, uh, turns yeah. in her favor. And, uh, I just remember like, I just remember thinking, why aren't you helping this poor girl? Like everyone's <laughs> such an asshole to her up to that point. And yeah. finally Lynn shows her how to do something and trusts her enough to do it. And, uh, yeah, she, she saves the day because of it. I thought it was, that's a really cool moment. I think uh, and that is one of those moments, like on a dime where you Bob is like, jumping down you think she's just gonna like i don't know like scold her yell at her whatever <laughs> like yeah. she does like oh great job everyone be more like her it's like, what <laughs> like i thought you were coming Sucking down to attack her it's like <laughs> get all the workers get them down there it's like oh shit something's about to happen you know and then she yeah. just like floats down like everyone be more like her I'm like oh okay got it um let's see matthew what would you show us i would so it the, the other thing I like about KJ's bridge scene is that you see no face for the first time in passing, yeah. which is just kind of funny. Like 
no face is like one of my favorite characters of all time just yeah for sure and and once once you see no face in spirited away like you'll start seeing no face everywhere and it's yeah it's hilarious and funny to me every time but um my favorite scene is when no face is chasing chihiro out of the bathhouse and so i like the whole chase scene but i really like when they get in the little boat and you just see like no face like like <laughs> sulking along like the the pipes and then like yeah. diving into the water <laughs> yeah yeah just cool it's like cool imagery but then also just really funny to me so just a yeah, hundred foot jump in just like yeah hey, go <laughs> like no faces motivations are so strange i still don't know what he wanted i like i still and if anyone knows feel free to jump in but it's just kind of like he just sort of seems like he's along for the ride in some ways he seems like almost the proxy for the viewer um and it's and i you're you're right about the 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 point where you'll see him everywhere because i've seen that face and that image a handful of times before i ever saw this movie and i didn't know it's where it came from so when he popped up i was like oh shit that's that guy <laughs> that's the yeah. guy that's that cool face yeah <laughs> yeah no um, face and no motivation right kind of yes, it's very yeah, strange exactly. yeah yeah um, yeah and then he just kind of ends up at zaniba's and just seems fine with it i don't know like when yeah, he starts first, eating like, people i'm i'm like I, yeah I, I, I don't know i had a hard time with that because when like he brings her all like the bath tokens because he helps her get that first one and then brings her a bunch i'm like oh that's cool he's being a cool thing you know yeah uh, and just like hey here's some bath tokens and then she won't take him and he just like fades away and gets sad um i don't know why i'm saying he i don't know what it is but no yeah. face like um but then later you know like with the gold and stuff and then like anyone that bites on that then like no face just consumes him it's like a test you know it's kind of like all right well yeah. if you'll if you show me you're greedy then i'm gonna eat you and that's like that's essentially i guess why she survives because she never takes anything that no face offers but yeah. i didn't understand why it was happening like i liked it i was on board with it but like like does he like does like no face want her to take all the gold or i, I don't know exactly what yeah. it was but um yeah like it's just like the immediate like justice was like all right well i'm gonna eat you <laughs> like that was it that's all it's like that's how yeah i don't know i like no face i mean a lot. As, as far as motivations are concerned i think that's probably as close as i could come to having a, a an idea about it uh it, is that he's sort of the test for greed right yeah like, he he sort of is the litmus test for like true good or true evil, I guess, in some ways, as much as we get from a Miyazaki film. Mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of like that. We don't know why, but it is kind of strange because everything else is explained to us. Like, yeah, it, even down to, we start seeing like flashbacks of her in the river and it's like, what? Oh, I don't know what mm -hmm. that is, but okay. And then that gets explained and you know, Zaniba, and also none of them die. Like, it's just like, they're just like in this, like, I don't know. They're just hanging out <laughs> yeah. inside of no face. Like, and then yeah, later on we see them like, okay, so it's not killing people. It's just like, I'm going <laughs> to, I don't know, bring you with me for a while. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I guess I their companionship can be explained that they are two um, people that don't belong in the bathhouse, right? She's yeah. human does not belong. He sneaks in, um, presumably was denied permission at some point, maybe. And That's then true. Right. So that, could be a reason like that. Yeah. yeah why yeah. he's drawn to her that makes as much sense as anything for me <laughs> um and speaking of no face it's really really hard for me not to pick uh the scene of the train ride with with no face and and the other crew out to meet zaniba i think so that's great. a perfect a perfect representation of the type of animation that miyazaki does uh just with the you know the 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 parallax of everything moving out the train window and all the random characters on there. I think it's like a, a really good encapsulation of what Miyazaki does best. Just these mm -hmm. imaginative characters, imaginative scenes, like taking such a mundane activity and making it so magical, I think is really, really cool. I, I try not to be spoilery with this pick, even though it's, I'm not really showing it to someone, but I try to pick something that's not spoilery, but it's really hard for me not to pick that scene. Um, yeah. My runner up being the when he tells her to meet at the bridge and they run through the flower patch and everything. That's another good example of of kind of what I'm talking about. And that's the scene I thought you were talking about, KJ. Mm, yeah. You're talking about uh -huh. the crossing of the bridge scene. But um, either way, those are all solid picks. And, uh, and honestly, you could probably just click to a random timestamp in the movie 
and yeah. show them five minutes and they'd probably be into it. So another thing that's great about that train answer. scene is how still it is. It's another example mm-hmm. of Miyazaki being still. It's kind of like yeah. in Totoro when they're waiting for the bus, right? It's mm-hmm. just a moment to spend with the characters. Yeah, yeah I, I love it. I'm no face on that one because I haven't seen it. So <laughs> <laughs> what are your but intentions? Okay. No, but you're, but you're right. Like he, he, it's such a quiet moment, but there's, it's so big at the same time. Um, and it's just like, it seems so like vast and intimate at the same time. And it's just, uh, I don't know. It's really cool. It's a really cool, quiet, yet sort of big moment. I don't know. I just, mm-hmm. I loved it so much. Um, I totally lost my train of thought here, but that's okay. Speaking of trains, we just talked about trains. <laughs> we can get back into this. Uh, no, uh, I talked about all the characters on the train and, and how it's such a good example of, you know, the world that Miyazaki creates. And one of my favorite things that I've come to know about Miyazaki watching these three films is just how many really cool, unique characters he can make. They seem, you know, there, he definitely has his thing he does with, you know, animals with human faces, but each one is still unique and they're all so cool and they're all so fun. And to me, he seems to treat all of his little characters with the same amount of love as he does his, you know, heroes and protagonists and Mm. main characters. They all have so much uh, character to them and and animation and and just like life to them. I think it's really cool, Uh, which makes a Miyazaki film, the perfect use case, use case for the Apollonia award. And KJ, that's uh, the we get that award. award. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we watched <laughs> Purple Rain, and I just was struck with how much I loved Apollonia in spite of it being a movie with Prince in it. And, you know, she's the figure that I hear about in pop culture, not more than Prince, but with regards to Purple Rain, you hear about Apollonia, you hear about the Lake Minnetonka scene, problematic scene to be sure, but it just seemed that. Apollonia almost transcended the movie in a lot of ways. And even though she was, she was a main character, she still wasn't Prince. Right. So in light of all that, we like to talk about the favorite supporting characters and the favorite characters that weren't the main character of the film. I want to know who your favorite supporting character, even as minor as you can get, or, you know, all the way up to, you know, the more major supporting characters. So yeah, let us, let us know here, KJ. Yeah, I think my favorite supporting character was Lynn. Yeah. She was um kind of the, I don't know, maid um that helped out Chihiro as mm-hmm. soon as she got done in the uh suit sprite room. Mm-hmm. And she kind of begrudgingly supported Chihiro throughout the whole movie. And even when I say begrudgingly, even that seemed like a an act or a face that she had to put on mm-hmm. to uh, in front of everybody else to say, "No, no, I'm not really helping this human. I'm being forced <laughs> to or something." Yeah. Um but I'd love to know more about her story. I'd love to, and I don't normally do that in a movie, but in this one, I, I thought it'd be kind of cool to know how she ended up in the bathhouse. How did she get yeah. to where she is? Um, she seemed very competent, and yet, um, you know, again, supported Chihiro throughout all of Chihiro's adventures. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, as soon as I saw you, you know, you wrote that out in, in our document here, and I, I, I realized I'm like, oh, that's right, like. I loved Lynn in this movie and, and, I, and in some ways I almost forget about her because she just sort of, you know, kind of floats in and out, but you're right. Like she, I would love to know that'd be a great like prequel. I wish, you know, that'd be really <laughs> cool if they could do that. And you're it reminded short. me of our, yeah. It reminded me of our conversation with, um, Arzu and Candace from geeky waffle. And we talked about solo mm. and, uh, we, we, we realized that Kira might be like the coolest character in that whole movie, but we know nothing about her. And that's yeah. similar with Lynn. Like she seems to be the one that knows how to do everything. Uh, she seems to have run of the house. She seems to have the trust of all the, the powers that be there, but she also is still stuck. And we get to figure out why um, everyone else is stuck there. Well, the other main characters are stuck there, but yeah, I, I would love to know, you know what's going on with there for sure. Well, speaking of people we don't really know much about Matt, I can see your answer on the document. So unless you've changed it, <laughs> tell the, <laughs> Tell the people what I can see. I thought you were going to say people you don't know much about, and you were going to say me. Like, people <laughs> yeah, don't know much about. For that. I'm, I'm the mysterious person here. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm all in on No Face. Uh, no Face, to me, like, I know it's probably the popular answer because he's, he's the most, like, it, No Face is the most iconic character from this movie that you see everywhere. 
Uh, but No Face, like I would want to see No Face be like a traveler in like some Miyazaki verse show up in other movies like mm. shared universe. You know, No Face is there in the background doing something, you know, and yeah. I just feel like it would be yeah. a great ongoing character that I just can't get enough of. Give No Face all well, the, the Stan Lee cameos in the exactly. verse, <laughs> yeah. no Face all around there. I mean, I'm I'm with you like I. It's hard not to pick no face. I mean, I, I saw this and instantly my brain is like, where can I put a no face tattoo on me? Cause I love no faces. <laughs> like this, yeah. this character is amazing. I, I love it yeah. so much. Um, so yeah, I don't know. No face, I think is the obvious answer. Uh, just, you know, in the spirit of something different, I think I would go with that little frog dude. I don't remember <laughs> his yeah. name or not, but like, love yeah, it. like Matt talked about like when he shows up on the bridge and then, like he just gets like frozen or whatever like in a water bubble i couldn't tell exactly what it was and just like yeah. sticks there just like floating around i don't know <laughs> i thought it was just a super fun little character to see and when no yeah. and when I no mean, face throws him up he just like swims away like oh, yep, yeah, yeah. Like, right. <laughs> oh, shit. go back bed. to the castle right, go back to the bathhouse yeah. <laughs> well it's funny because i almost disqualified no face because i'm like it's pretty easy pick but when i think about it he's the perfect apollonia award winner because I mean, Apollonia is a huge part of Purple Rain, so yeah. it fits, and I'll, I'll oh, allow it. If you, had, if you had not allowed No Face, we would have lost subscribers. Can you imagine? Yeah. That? That's true. People that's actually, have I'm sure that's true. <laughs> and one co-host. I, think, I would have yeah. never come back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that would going be a to problem. Talking Pictures now. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I, I assume your intern would go with you, and our yeah. stuff would stop being edited, so that would be, be a bad. real bummer. <laughs> um. Well, I actually I want to pick a uh, Kamaji, the uh, the uh, the guy down in the in the in the dungeons making everything work. Um, and cool. I I also want to wrap up his little dust dust mite buddies that throw the coal <laughs> into the into the yeah. into the fire. There, those were my actual pick. I just love those little guys. They're such simple little animations, such simple little creatures. But I don't know. I just thought they were so fun, so so cute and cool. So I'll take is a package deal. I'll take Kamaji and his little his little minions. The uh, yeah, suit sprites are in. Oh, go ahead. The uh, suit sprites were in Totoro as well. So when you get to that one, Tyler. Oh, uh, yeah. nice. Yeah, see, we a have a, we one. have a Miyazaki verse. So yeah, <laughs> we need to see No Face pop up now. And yeah, Kamaji was giving me like uh, if you mixed a Robotnik and a spider together, it's kind of just like <laughs> yeah. what it looks like. They have like very similar faces and glasses, yeah. like they are For brothers sure. or something, you know. Does No Face make an appearance in Ready Player One? That seems like a movie that it would have been thrown into with all the different references in there. That's it wouldn't surprise me. I don't remember it. Hmm. But it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, Studio well, Ghibli, I think they're pretty weird with their licensing um okay i think uh the the movies as of this recording are streaming on hbo which which might help some of the kids see the movie tyler yeah. um, for sure absolutely but before that i'm i'm pretty sure they were pretty strict about how their movies were distributed and yeah they never wanted it streamed initially i'm curious like what changed to get it to go to hbo unless they just got like bought Money. out or whatever but like <laughs> But I mean, yeah, he was, I mean, Miyazaki was very particular about the money and stuff like that, about like never wanting to like, didn't need to make a ton of money. You know, that wasn't like the purpose of the movie and that's why he never wanted it to stream. So I guess there's an offer he couldn't refuse or whatever, but uh, I'm glad they're there now so we can enjoy them. Yeah, yeah they're merchandising. Sure. Yeah, yeah, the merchandising, right? Yeah. It's amazing. It's top quality. There's, there's no cheap or not not cheap as in money but cheap as in material and yeah right exactly um, yeah i mean i watched it on hbo uh and you you have the option to watch dubs or subs it's just a click there you can you can choose and i i so like last episode i watched i watched howl's moving castle with my mom and she's a perfect example of someone who liked the movie and that's like right in her wheelhouse it's sweet it's uh it's not over it's not violent it's you know it maybe maybe a little fantastic for her. I could tell she, I mean, we both struggled with a little bit of the fantastic elements and it sounds like all of us kind of did, but it's a good example of like why it's maybe that's why he allowed it to be streaming or studio Ghibli allowed it to stream is because it can expose it to so many, you know, such a wider audience. I don't know. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. 
Um, well, I think it's time for the drive-in double feature brought to you by our good friend, Adam Driver. Um, Spirited Away is a beautiful Miyazaki film. And I'm curious what other movie you would pair this up with in, in your uh, dream double feature scenario. We'll say we're at the drive-in somewhere uh, that still exists wherever you are. And uh, yeah, what would you pair this up with? What would go first? What would go second? Uh, KJ, I'll start with you. So Spirited Away, we have Chihiro, who's kind of a normal person in a fantastic realm. And mm -hmm. I was trying to think of movies that, that went the other way around, kind of a fantastic person in, in our world, in mm -hmm. the mundane world. Have you guys ever oh, okay. seen the Flying Purple People Eater movie with Neil Patrick Harris as a yeah, young Yeah, I girl. remember that old movie. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I don't, think I don't know if I could recommend that, actually. It's, it's really not that good of a movie, but, <laughs> yeah. but that was the first one that came to mind. Um, but if you're still up for more animation, there's another Ghibli movie, not by Miyazaki, by um, Isao Hato. I don't really know how to pronounce his name. Um, but Princess Kaguya was his, <laughs> um, his latest and, and possibly his last film where a princess comes from another realm, I guess you could say, and then is, is living in Japan. Um, and it's, it's another just wonderful Studio Ghibli movie. So, oh, cool. um, and either order, I, you know, I, I'm not, I don't, nice. I, don't I, I think they'd both be fine. Okay. That sounds I'll awesome. have to check that out. Uh, let's see, Benjamin, what would you um, pick for your double feature? As I often do, my simple brain just sees one thing and it's like, oh yes, I will connect it with that. So, uh, I wanted to connect with this uh, never ending story because I thought getting a lot oh, of Falcor yeah. vibes, you know, and I was yeah. like, yeah, Heavy I just want like, a human. Vibes. Yeah, it's like I want a human riding on this magical white dragon thing and like trying to help people. So it was really as simple as that. I was like, that looks like Falcor. <laughs> I want to watch never ending story yeah. now. So it's like, yeah, I think that <laughs> no, works. That's and perfect. Both kind of kids' movies, but both kind of like enough for the adults too. I was one thing about this movie i was surprised just how much like vomiting and just like just like <laughs> yeah. grossness there was in it like i i was fine with it but it was like man they were just like just letting it out there but i did love that there's one time where uh the whatever stink monster like vomits is like oh excuse me <laughs> it's like, oh, he's <laughs> <just> like <laughs> manners as he's destroying this bathhouse with all his nah. vomit but yeah i like nah, that wasn't so. it wasn't it Freddie from 88 mile per hour podcast whose mom wouldn't let him let him watch anything with like boogers or vomit or anything like, yeah, so like, like yeah, that? I think it was. That sounds familiar. Poor kid was deprived of <laughs> Miyazaki. No, the, the vomit um, budget for this movie was huge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> huge yeah. budget for it. Over the top. <laughs> yeah. But they it made it back $20, $20 million before it yeah. even was uh, released in the US. So. <laughs> yeah. What were you going to say, KJ? I'm always surprised at how much blood is in this movie too, right? When yeah, um, yeah. Hockey yeah. gets cut up, he's pretty cut up. Yeah, without yeah, a doubt. Yeah, coughing up blood and everything. <laughs> um, and like splatting on the walls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, I think the, that sometimes I go into these expecting like the Disney movies for some reason. I think my brain's like, oh, it's animated. It'll be super kid friendly. And then again, like Mononoke really just like threw me for a loop, just like <laughs> yeah. cutting off people's arms and stuff. It's like, Oh wait, what is going on right now? <laughs> and this one too, it was just like, cause it was pretty uh, like, okay. I don't remember anything really sticking out to me until that, like, you know, stink monster starts throwing up like, Oh, this is a <laughs> yeah. lot that is happening here. <laughs> like this is nonstop. So I don't know. Like, I, yeah, I liked it. Who doesn't love a bit of some, some goopy vomit and, I, I really yeah. liked the reactions of the stink monster too, especially from, I keep calling her son cause that's what we hear most throughout mm. the movie, but I uh, heard the, like the little shiver she does when she oh, smells yeah. him and it goes, the, like, the way she's able body. to keep her composure still. But like, I thought that was really cool and um, yeah, fun stuff from our boy Miyazaki. Uh, Matt, what would you pair this movie with and which would go first and second? So Chihiro is going through a big change. She's in a new town. Uh, she's going to go to a new school. And in my mind, part of this fantasy is sort of part of her coping with with all of that. And especially when you get into the themes of like part of the magic and the like the spell there is like remembering your name and like it's mm -hmm. tied to like Haku is is connected to a memory of her like in, in the yeah. river. So it's like she's dealing with like memories in a very tangible way. So on that note, um, I think like that might be a little too deep for kids, you know, on a first viewing or or for even teenagers to like make those connections. 
And so I'd start out with Inside Out, which is dealing with a very similar thing, but a lot more on the nose with the symbolism yeah. and a lot more mm. on the nose with the metaphors. And then show this second where it's a little more uh, abstract. Yeah. I like it. I think that's a solid answer. I think it's a solid strategy. And in fact, I agree so much that that's my exact pick. Um, <laughs> we try not to do duplicate answers here, but I just instantly, I was like, oh, this is inside out. And, I, and actually, that's how I described it to Alex, oh, uh, nice. my, my partner, KJ. She doesn't, she doesn't watch a lot of movies with me. And uh, so I, I told her after the, I was like, it's kind of like, a, it was sort of like inside out, but with like monsters and, and magic and stuff. And not that there's not, monsters and magic and inside out but um yeah. it was just too perfect of a pick for me i you know i we don't want to have duplicates but gotta put respect on bing bong's name you know you <laughs> i had i had a thought <laughs> and maybe it's too weird but when we were talking earlier about the absence of like true good or true evil i thought about uh, it reminded me a lot of um the message from uh, the last black man in san francisco the line where he says you know people aren't just one thing yeah. And so I think there's a good parallel there. I don't know I don't know if it's enough of a parallel to uh truly connect them in a way that would make sense. But uh for the sake of having a different answer, I'm going to put that on second once the kids have gone to sleep uh and mom and dad have popped an edible, they can Nice. they can get whisked <laughs> away in the beautiful the beautiful imagery of uh not that, you know, not that they were, you didn't just watch a beautiful movie and spirit it away, but there's sort of a, a dreamlike quality to the last black man in San Francisco that I think is, would be really cool to watch late. Much easier watch than the witch, you know? Yeah. You want to be <laughs> screwing up the parents like Matt wanted to. The, 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 <laughs> kids, destroying everybody. the kids could wake up during this one. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They'd be okay. Um, well, let's, uh, let's head over to our Rushmore mountain. Shall we, fellas? Let's do it. These are OR scrubs. Oh, are they? Um, I had a hard time coming up with something, uh, so I asked in the document that we share that our listeners and viewers don't get to see, um, and I, I asked for a little bit of help. So I don't know who came up with all these different ideas. Uh, so whoever it was, thank you very much. I kind of assumed it was KJ, but... Um, <laughs> I, uh, the one I chose, I thought it sounded really fun, was Best Amusement Park Movies. Um, that sounds, I don't know, it just popped out to me right away. So uh, let's hear it. KJ, you came up with the idea. Let's, let's start with you. Yeah, I came up with the idea, and then I started thinking, you know, what, what movies do have amusement <laughs> parks? Um, and the first one that came to my mind, I don't think actually has an amusement park, but Big Fish, maybe that's more circus, but... Yeah, I feel like that's that's that Carnival, oh, Circus, it's and amusement all Yeah, just yeah. rides. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't know if you guys have heard of or seen the Angry Video Game Nerd movie. That's got a fun amusement uh, park scene in it. I know who the a, Angry Video Game Nerd is, but I've never yeah, seen that movie. He made a movie and so oh, okay, good for him. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> good job, man. <laughs> <laughs> Way to be James Ralph. Um Westworld from um I think it was seventy three. You guys see that? Okay. I've the, seen the HBO yeah. version. Yeah. Oh boy. No, that's that's a good that's a good series. This is a is little it Yul Brenner who's in Westworld? Yes. Is it? Yeah, Yul, Yul Brenner is the Man in Black. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then is Jurassic Park? We counting that as an amusement park? Is that? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Is that just win oh. this? I mean, oh, yeah, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> I love that. Oh, that's four. Oh, f- okay. Is that four? Yeah, four. Yep. Yeah. I, I even spirited what I You know, I wasn't sure if that was supposed to be on the mountain there. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, course, if you yeah. want spirited but, way on there, tear it up. Whatever <laughs> you want to do. It's your mountain. <laughs> Matt, what would you throw on your mountain? Spirited Away is on my mountain. Uh, Inside Out, you know, they've got the different like nostalgia areas. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Scooby Doo by James Gunn, you know, it's kind of an amusement island. And it's, yeah, I think, sure. the only movie with Sugar Ray in it, which is funny to me. And then <laughs> Jurassic Park. That's a solid choice. Um, for mine, I, you know, in live trying to do different movies, because I think Jurassic Park could easily just be on all four of ours. I mean, it's the one movie we all saw together in person when we rented a theater. So it's like it's it's a great movie. Yeah, it's we love that. Um, but for me, I'm going to go with uh, Adventureland uh, with uh, Jesse Eisenberg. Um, I think that was a really fun movie, more about like working at an amusement park. Uh, it's 
not in it a ton, but we hear about it a ton in National Lampoon's Vacation as they're trying to get to Wally World. So I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite line readings ever of I think you're all fucked in the head. I think that's just one of the best lines ever in a movie. <laughs> so <laughs> I got to put that in there. Um, I go with Zombieland. So I guess it's like the two different sides of <laughs> Jesse Eisenberg in the amusement yeah. parks is like <laughs> working there and killing zombies there. Uh, and then I don't know. I mean, I, I thought about the warriors. I mean, kind of, you know, takes place on Coney Island, like the, the fight and stuff like that. But, um, I don't know if any of you guys saw the documentary called class action park. I yes. think it was also on HBO. <laughs> Do you see that KJ? I did. It's, it's kind of right by where I grew up. Okay. Um, <laughs> I grew up with those stories. It was a little weird to see it formally in a documentary <laughs> style, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, then I think like the jackass guys even did a movie kind of based on it. But Mm -hmm. essentially it was just like, I mean, an amusement park that just didn't follow any sort of like regulations or rules. So people were, did people die there? I know people got really hurt there, but I feel like, you know, dying was like, maybe it was like the rumor or whatever, you (laughs) know, the legend of the place. But the documentary Mm. was really interesting just to learn, like it's in New Jersey and it was just like free for all kind of thing it's like if camp nowhere actually happened you know <laughs> it's just like people just like getting hurt and like the no adults thing yeah i don't know it was kind of nuts so i recommend class action park that was a really interesting documentary about this place i've never seen it or heard of it but uh one of my good friends brian barrick friend of the pod he worked at a theme park uh in new jersey when he was growing up nice. and from what i know about him and the antics he got himself into yes that that tracks for me <laughs> yeah <laughs> solid dude great guy uh but you know we're all we're all rambunctious teenagers and he told me some stories so that tracks uh <laughs> class action park so you know i picked this it, this topic popped out to me and i should have anticipated all the crossover here but you know i didn't and that's fine um i've also got to pick zombie land uh that was the first one that actually popped into my head um vacation also i mean you know, like you said, they don't spend a whole lot of time at Wally World, but it's the the whole point of the movie is to it's get the there, payoff so. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I mean, I just I have to do it. Jurassic Park. I mean, it's it's like the theme park movie, right? Um mm-hmm. and yeah, it has it has strong ties to the pod here personally. So uh and then one that I thought of right at the last minute, even though it doesn't take place all at the theme at the amusement park or the carnival or whatever we want to call it but uh the pivotal scene in strangers of a strangers on a train with the merry-go-round yeah at the end um i think that scene is cool enough to include it on my mountain here so i'm gonna go with those four and that tunnel of love thing towards the beginning when all that happens like yeah yeah it definitely kind of bookends the movie so yeah that's yeah i had on the on my short list too yeah to throw one more on there have you guys ever seen the show step by step they have a Disney episode. I think maybe when Disney bought ABC. Oh, or whatever, the old TV the show. Yeah. 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 And it's, I have really fond memories of that step-by-step Disney episode. I don't know if that quite rates as high as the rest of these. Oh, I remember that show, done, but not that yeah. episode. They must've done stuff like that. Cause I remember they did a family matters one too. Cause I, I think that's like where Urkel proposed or something like that. It was like at Disneyland. So that <laughs> must've been some time over well. there. <laughs> yeah that definitely like maybe for after they bought abc or whatever but mm-hmm. the thing i remember about step by step is the oldest son like pouring milk in his mouth and then chocolate syrup in his <laughs> yeah. mouth and shaking his head like that's like <laughs> the thing i remember the most about step by step <laughs> well when we log off i'm gonna go try that immediately um i like to think that they just closed the park for one day and just filmed all those shows at mm. one point so i like to yeah. pretend there's like a big party of all those different <laughs> people from my childhood hanging out getting into hijinks um kj you put a few bullet points down at the bottom of our document here and one that jumps out to me uh you you wanted to talk about boundaries uh between the mundane world and the fantastic world and i thought that was really cool and maybe you know could could work some of these movies into our into our um double feature sponsored yeah. by adam driver um but yeah like you know the the harry potter jumping through the wall and the hobbit and all those things um i, I don't know exactly what further thoughts you had but um yeah now yeah, i just I, I love stories that that have a mundane world and a fantastic world and i, I love yeah. the boundary between them 
you know, sometimes the fantastic comes into the mundane, right? In Harry Potter, it starts with um, Dumbledore and Hagrid popping onto Privet Drive. Yeah. And, and then eventually Harry goes to uh, the fantastic world, even Star Wars, right? We start on a farm. And then once we leave Tatooine, we're, we're in, a, in a world that Luke doesn't understand, doesn't know. He's got to learn it. Yeah. Um, Howl's moving castle, right? The, the world mm-hmm. pops into her land, then she's in the castle. And then that becomes mm-hmm. a whole thing. Even the Hobbit, right? The Shire. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and and in this movie we, we had the tunnel, which was absolutely a, a boundary of some sort. Mm-hmm. Then the oh, church. Sure. Then we had the bridge to the bathhouse. We got even further into into Fantastic World. Then there was the steam room. There was just a lot of um, boundaries that Shihiro had to cross, and eventually she gets access to the entire bathhouse, and then that becomes kind of her world. And then even towards the end, she gets on the barrel boat, as you had said. The train was another transition into even further into fantasy to the uh, to the other twin. I forget her name. Zen Baba is that not Zen- Zen- Z- yeah. Zeniba? I think Zeniba. 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 Yep. Yeah. Um, so I just I'd love seeing all the the transitions and those those boundaries. Um, so I I really thought this film yeah did that really well. Yeah, for sure. I mean that like that is uh, now that I'm thinking about it. Now that you pointed out, I'm like maybe that's why this movie. And a lot of Miyazaki's movies, well, the three that I've seen, <laughs> uh, <laughs> jump out to me so much because they all have that same theme. And, you know, one of my favorite movies of all time or series of movies, uh, keep an eye out to your podcast feeds because you'll be seeing a lot of this coming up. Uh, if you like and subscribe to three films <laughs> of the podcast on any social media and podcast platform uh, is uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the And one of my, fa- my favorite of the three, well, I can't say that. But one of my favorite parts of the three is them. You're on the record. Shire. So yeah, let's yeah. make sure you get it. <laughs> my favorite <laughs> movie overall is the two, the, twi- the two towers. But um, anyways, but I love that moment where they're leaving the Shire. And I, every time I rewatch it, I get that sense of like, now we're going on our adventure. Right. Mm-hmm. And this movie certainly has that, like when our dumb dad leads us to the tunnel <laughs> and you go, go through there. It's like, Oh, we're now we're going on this adventure. And in this movie, we get there a lot quicker than we do in uh, yeah. the fellowship of the rings but yeah that is a cool moment in in a lot of movies and now ben ben and matt you guys are big potter fans so i'm sure that resonates with you as well yeah i mean that's what i was gonna say the sorcerer's stone i think would be a great double mm. feature with this because it is it's someone learning you know like katie said like learning the language and just like how things work you know you don't really harry doesn't understand that you know when he crosses over even just like platform nine and three quarters all that kind of stuff like everything had to be learned. Um, and I think there's some, some real parallels there that again, if my simple brain hadn't just thought of Falcor, like maybe I would have been like, oh, yeah, <laughs> Sorcerer's Stone would be really good. That's like more, more parallel themes instead of just like a flying white dragon <laughs> parallel. But you know, no, there's I'm happy with plenty it. of opportunity never... for, there's plenty of opportunity for Harry Potter answers. We yeah, need exactly. a story. What are we going to bring up? Never ending story again. So and maybe even yeah, the sequel, would, right? The sequel is the one where Sebastian actually goes to, uh, I forget the name of the land, but yeah, me t- yeah, that's true. That'd be, yeah, that'd be a good one too. I'm trying to remember. We what should it was. do that as a watch party. That'd be really fun. Maybe over the holidays or yeah. the winter time, never ending story. That'd be cool. Um, well shoot KJ. Uh, I think that's going to do it for tonight. Thank you so much for coming on. It's always a, it's always a good time to talk to you and, yeah. um, and, uh, you know, all the fellas on your pod, um, for everyone out there listening, why don't you give everyone another opportunity to, to help, to, to find you, give them a little help here. Where can they find you? Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me guys. Um, this was a lot of fun. Of Great talking about, uh, spirited away. Um, I'm on Twitter at KJ 1000, 1000, uh, talking pictures, trivia is on Twitter at talking studios. Uh, we also have a website, talkingstudios.com. We're on, uh, Apple podcast, Google, um, hopefully wherever you're listening, we're there. Um, and right around this time, I think our Ghostbusters episode should be coming out. Oh, um, nice. For the, yeah, new Ghostbusters episode. So nice. check it out. And then um, Tom does a B-side, which is really fun. Um, he goes pretty deep um, into some of these movies. So check that out, too. Nice. But, I can yeah. imagine he does. <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he does. I like listening to Tom pontificate. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> and uh, I think Ghostbusters, for anyone out there that's listening, that's a really good entry into your show because it's something that, uh, people I feel like would know a lot of trivia about and it's really fun to listen and play along there's a lot of times when you guys are trying to answer and I'm like I know that I know that I'm like <laughs> yeah <laughs> dinging my invisible buzzer 
I remember <laughs> specifically the Super Troopers episode. I would have mm. crushed you all. In that one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll do the sequel. But no, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of Great. fun, and uh, we're super happy to have you. And uh, we can't wait for you to come back. And um, yeah, yeah, for those listening, thank you. Uh, thank you for liking, subscribing, tell her, telling all your friends. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time. See you. Who are you? Rubius Hagrid, keeper of keys and grounds at Hogwarts. Of course, you'll know all about Hogwarts. Sorry, no. No? Blimey, Harry, didn't you ever wonder where your mum and dad learned it all? Learned what? You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? A wizard. <laughs>